Hello and welcome to the ninth tutorial in the series. Today we're going to learn how to add grass to the scene. Then we're going to add a V-Ray camera to the scene. And finally we're going to start to assign V-Ray setup for the rendering. So as you can see, if you noticed, I upgraded to 3D Studio Max 2016. So some options will be a little bit different, but it's essentially the same. So you can continue following if you're using a previous version of uh, 3D Studio. The icons will be maybe one to the left or to the right, but it's essentially the same thing. Uh, as you can see, they added an option that when you go over an object in space, you have a highlight of that object in yellow. And if you choose an object, it becomes highlighted in blue. So that's what this is. All right. So let's continue. First thing I want to do is I want to add grass to the scene. So the grass is here. It starts from this point here, goes all the way. This is the fence. So it goes all the way with the fence to this point here. So all this is grass. Let's go to the top viewport. <coughs> I'm going to select the plan, right click, hide unselected, so I'm going to stay with the plan only. Now I'm going to add the grass plane, so going to go to shapes, line, snap toggle, make sure using the right mouse button on the 3 magnet that the vertex, vertex is on. And I'm going to choose the grass, so let's start from here here, here, and to this place, because here it's something else. You have like stairs here, so let's continue to this spot here, and just go over on the sides of the house, like so, and closed. All right, I'm going to the perspective viewport using the P button. P shortcut gives you, uh, to, uh, gets you to the perspective viewport. All right, so now let's unhide everything. So right click, unhide selected, I'm sorry, unhide all. And now as you can see, we have the plan. Let's hide the plan for a second. I'm gonna left click on it and hide selection. This is our grass. I'm going to right click on it, convert to editable poly, and take it up so it's somewhere near the beginning. I'm going to click on the snap toggle because I don't want to snap. So take it up a little bit, like so. So it covers, let's go to the front viewport, and F3 to see wireframe. So it covers only the beginning of this deck all right now okay so this will be our grass plane let's call it grass something else I want to do is let's go to the top for a second okay I want the grass to begin after the deck so I'm going to choose edge choose this edge here F3 to go to wireframe and move this edge to the edge of our deck so doesn't have to be 100% at the end but somewhere here is fine so now we have a plane that will be our grass next thing I want to do is I want to download a texture for this grass create a displacement map for it and add a modifier so this will be a grass with bumpiness with displacement on it alright so I'm going to use the site I always use for textures CG textures let's go inside the site uh, this is a great site for uh, 3D textures or uh, any kind of textures that I can use for 3D scenes you have grass somewhere here I think in ground no let's go back nature 
grass. Okay, I'm going to click on grass and I'm going to select the kind of grass I want to use. Uh, I think, let's see, how about this one? Yeah, this seems good. Maybe let's try another one. You can choose whichever grass you want. I'm going to go with... This one is not full. Let's go back to one. I'm going to choose this grass here. Now I'm going to download it. I can download. Uh, you can see login to download. This means that you can uh, create a free account, log in and download it without uh, uh, paying a subscription to the site. If you want a very high resolution, huge resolution textures, you'll need to go premium and create a paid uh, subscription subscription to the site. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to log in to download. Uh, for this one is too small. I need to be a premium for a normal resolution. So let's see another texture of grass. Maybe this one. All right, so this is great. 1,600 over 1,064 is good. Let me just log in. Uh, all right, now I'm logged in. You can log in using your own password. I'm going to download this texture here. Just downloaded the file. This is the texture. Okay. After I finish downloading, what I'm going to do is, let me just move it over to the desktop. I'm going to include this texture as usual in the description below. So now let's apply this texture to this plane. I'm going to go to material editor. I'm going to create a new texture. Let's call it grass. And I'm going to change from standard to V-Ray material. V-Ray, materials V-Ray. Very material. I'm going to add a map to the diffuse slot. So here on this square here, bitmap, and choose the file we just downloaded, the grass. Okay, this is fine. Let's go back to grass. I'm going to apply this grass, just drag and drop on this plane. You cannot see the texture because this option is not on. Show shaded material and viewport. I'm going to turn it on. As you can see, you can see only a green plane. This is because we don't have a UVW a modifier on it. So it's not stacked correctly. The texture is not stacked correctly on the plane. So I'm going to add this modifier here, UVW map. Okay, this is fine. Let's go to perspective. Now I want this texture to be aligned correctly. So the width and the height will be correct to the image. As you can see, the image, texture image, is uh, wider and uh, shorter than a square. So in order to use this uh, spec ratio for the texture in the UVW map, I'm going to click on bitmap fit. And then I will choose the bitmap uh, of the plane. Now this assigns a right uh, spec ratio from width to height. Now this is too big. If I look at the grass from near, it's way too big. I need to make it smaller. So I'm going to click once on the UVW map and make it smaller. This will not make the whole plane smaller, only the texture. And that's because I clicked on UVW map. It's uh, when this is blue, uh, these affect the texture only. So I'm going to make it smaller, something like this. Seems fine. All right. Just make it smaller so it will look fine to you. Let's try rendering it for a second just to see how it looks. Now you have these lines, dividing lines here. We'll fix them later. For now, it is fine. Let's go nearer. I want to see how it looks from this distance. 
Okay, it looks good. So the texture, as you, as you can see, it's aligned. Uh, the texture uh, size is fine. It looks good for its size. Now let's fix these dividing lines here. What I'm going to do to fix them is I'm going to go to Photoshop. We're going to edit the texture for a bit. So in Photoshop, I'm going to open the file that I downloaded from the uh, of the grass. Let's just find it. Here we go. Now what I want to do is I want to move this uh, endpoint to the center so that I can see the uh, where this point and this point meet because as you can see here when one texture ends the other one begins so it's like tiling so I want to see this line here in order to fix it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this line to the center and move this line up to the center also the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go to filter let me just remember I think other and offset now I can offset the line as much as I want. As you can see, this is the hori horizontal offset, so this way. This is the line in the center. You can see it here. So I'm going to move it to the center, like so. And this is the vertical line. So I'm going, this is our problematic line. I'm going to move it up, not so much up, just needs to be in the center of the screen, like so. As you can see, now the line from the end is in the center. What this does is just gives me an opportunity to fix this texture. Because now this line and this line uh, are connected uh, in a good way because it's a continuation of the image. So what I need to do now is just blur this line here in the center and this line here and save this image. And then we will fix this lining problem. So what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to go to this uh, health brush tool. I'm going to make the brush bigger. Just a little bit bigger like so. I'm going to click Alt and select from where I want to copy. So here, click on here, leave the Alt button and now you can just draw on the line here like so. Now when you leave the button it will fix the drawing so it will look more natural so now I'm going to fix this here and this here just fixing the line so we won't see the line that separates okay this looks much better now this line here I'm going to alt select from here and copy it to the center this will fix it and alt copy from here here Alright, so now this grass is uh, continuing correctly. We don't have a separation line in the center. What I'm going to do is save this file as same name but fixed. Save it. And now if I go back to 3D Studio Max and I changed our textures, I'll click on M, change the bitmap from this file which we download from the internet to this fixed one you can see that we fixed the lines now our grass is aligned very where very well if I render it now it looks very good alright next thing I want to do is I want to give it a bumpiness because if I render now you can see that it's a plane it's like a painting on a plane you don't have a bumpiness of the grass uh, there are many ways to add this bumpiness. You can use V-Ray Fur, you can use uh, uh, plugins, uh, there are many, many plugins for this. But the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use displacement. In order to use displacement, I need a displacement map. So I need a map that will tell Max, uh, 3D Studio Max, uh, take the brighter colors in this image that I will give it and push them up and take the darker colors and push them down and this will create this noise that will be our grass so in order to create this map I'm going to go back to Photoshop I'm going to use the same image because I want the same map to be bumped 
and I'm going to fix it so it will be a displacement map. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image adjustments and make it black and white. This will make it easier on the program on 3D Studio Max to know what is darker and what is brighter. This darker spots here will go down and the brighter spots here will go up so we'll have the bumpiness. Now I need to help the, prob uh, the program some more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a modifier called image adjustments and modifier called levels. So this le uh, modifier essentially what it does if you take this upper value and you push it down the image becomes brighter. And if you take this bottom value and you push it up the darker spots become darker and the brighter spots become brighter and this center one is the saturation so you can make it saturated like very very uh, white or you can make it very contrasted so I'm going to make it contrasted like so even more and now if I zoom out you can see that the uh, 3D Studio Max will have no problem uh, separating the bright values and the dark values it will be it will create a good uh, displacement map so what I did here is I used black and white, then I added levels and uh, gave it a strong contrast. Now let's save this image as displacement, disp. Okay, I'm going to save it now. And we can go and close Photoshop. Now in order to add this modifier, I'm going to add, let's click on it again so it won't be blue and I'm going to add a modifier named V-Ray Displacement Modifier. What this does is exactly what it sounds. It's a, dis a modifier that adds displacement to the mesh. So the grass mesh will have displacement. Now, first thing is a, what kind of displacement of bumpiness do I want? I want 3D mapping or 2D mapping? For our example, we have a 2D plane. This is a straight flat plane even if it had a little bit of bumps, it's still pretty flat. So for this example, it's much, much better to use the 2D mapping, the landscape, so ground and things like that. 3D mapping is better for objects like uh, uh, compound objects, like uh, cylinders and statues and things that are three-dimensional. If you have planes like this, always use the 2D mapping. It's much, much faster on the uh, rendering. Next I'm going to do is I'm going to add the map that will cause the displacement. This is the map that we just created. So I'm going to go to bitmap, choose this grass 0052M displacement, and this is now the map that will be displacing our grass. This map will use this UVW map modifier, so it will displace the same way as you can see the grass here in the image. Next. I'm going to uh, choose the amount. Let's leave it at one centimeter. So the highest value will be one centimeter above the plane. Let's give this a uh, resolution. Uh, 512 is a little bit low. Let's give it 024. And precision, let's give it 16 for now. So the higher these values are, the uh, more memory you will need and the a uh, rendering process will take longer but the result will be much much better so 1024 and 16 is good is a good result now let's try rendering so we can see the sides here and see what we have right off the bat you can see that there's a little bit bumpiness as you can see the grass is jumping so it's not flat anymore now let's go to this connection here. I'm going to zoom in here and let's see what it does with the grass. Let's bump the amount to 3. As you can see this is a very very close rendering. So the bump gives a very strong bump to the grass. It doesn't look a 100% good if this close but when you go just a little bit back also we can bump this up to even 5 and we render again from a small distance it looks very very good It looks like real grass so this is how we control essentially the grass this is how we create the grass alright this is fine for now for the grass 
And now we'll start what uh, all of you wanted to see in this uh, tutorial series. I'm sorry it took that long, but uh, these projects often do. Uh, we're going to assign a V-Ray camera and start modifying the rendering setup here. I'm using V-Ray 3.008. This is a good version. I advise you to download the, the uh, V-Ray 3. It's a very good uh, plugin for rendering. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add a camera here. So we can see the house from this backyard. I'm going to go to the top viewport. Let's make a camera. Go to cameras, V-Ray and physical camera. In the physical camera you have a lot, a lot of things, a lot of controls. These controls mimic real-world uh, photographer cameras. So you have field of view and zoom factors, exposure and a lot of things that you don't really need to know for the beginning level. So I'm going to go over the essentials in the camera here. But first of all, let's just put this camera in this place here and face it to the house, to the center of the house. Now let's go to the front viewport. If I hit F3, I can see the grass is here and the, my, my camera is way too low, so I'm going to control click on the camera and the uh, uh, end of the camera and just take them up somewhere here. Now I'm going to click C in order to see what the camera sees. Uh, I'm too close by. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is Depending on the resolution you are using, the height and the width of the picture will change. So if I go to the render setup here and I go to comment tab, you can see that the resolution I'm currently using is 640 over 480. I usually want to use an HD resolution. So I'm going to go to custom, HDTV video, and uh, 1920 over 1080, which is 1080p, which is HD. And now if I go to the camera again, C, I just clicked C and I'm going to the camera. You can see that the uh, view didn't change, but it needs to change. Why? Because in render setup, if you, uh, you can see that the width is uh, much bigger than the height. So the picture needs to be long and short. But no, doesn't matter what I do, if I go to custom, uh, now it's more square, but the view didn't change. In order for me to see how it will be actually be rendered, what I need to do is I need to click on the V-Ray camera here, left click on it, and show save frame. What this does is shows you how the final render will be, uh, width over height. So if I'm at uh, 640 over 480, which is almost a square, it will be very different than when I'm at HDTV, which is much wider. So as you can see, the view changes a little bit depending on what resolution I'm using, what aspect image aspect ratio I'm using. Aspect ratio is this over this. So width over height. Uh, so I need to use this uh, V-Ray camera, show safe frame when I'm aligning the camera. It's very important because you can align the camera and then just uh, render it and the render will be totally different than what you aligned. So I'm going to click on show save frame and now I'm going to fix the camera position. I'm going to take it up a little bit, take it back like so, take it back more, rotate it a little like so and like this, or maybe like this, yeah. And now I'm going to go to the top viewport, choose the camera, and go back to C to the camera. And in the properties, in the modify panel, I need to choose the camera in order to see the properties of the camera. So I'm going. That's why I went to top, chose the camera, and now I can see all these properties. What I can do, uh, the first thing I can do is open the aperture. So open the eye of the camera or the lens so that will uh, get more of the image. It's like zooming. But when you go too far, the image starts to be uh, disproportionate. It starts to be very 
sharp down and sharp up not not quite as you as we need that to be so let's control Z it back what I want to do is film gate I'm going to take it up to 45 and the focal length I'm going to go take down to 35 and just notice that it's uh, not uh, becoming very strange looking when you t take these values up and down uh, it needs to be still proportionate so this is fine 45 and 35 is fine this value the lower it is the more uh, zoomed out you are and this value the higher it is the more zoomed out you are you also have the zoom factor which is the same essentially the same thing so these three control the zoom factor of the camera all right okay so this is fine now my grass doesn't cover the whole image here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lie a little bit and I'm going to make it bigger edible poly select this edge here and take it on the x-axis to its maximum let's go to the perspective viewport and take it more here I'm going to select this one go to camera and move it to the right so it engulfs the whole camera okay so this is fine for now let's give the displacement the UVW map and the displacement modifier back what I did it just went from here to here and now it reads everything and if we render it now okay so the camera is aligned for now if we render it as is it is very dark that's because when you put the cam the V-Ray camera on it has a, a brightness controls built inside of it so if I render in perspective viewport the same image you can see it's much brighter that's because we don't yet have lights in the scene so the perspective viewport just use custom lights we have no shadows no nothing if you go to camera to the V-Ray camera and you render it uses let's choose the camera and see in modify panel it uses these brightness values film speed ISO which means the higher this value is the brighter your image will be shutter speed the lower uh, this number the brighter your image will be and you also have a F number the lower this number the brighter your image will be I will not exactly explain what each one of these does because this is more of a, a professional tutorial uh, this one is for beginners this is more for experts so for now just leave it as is but know that these three one two and three control the zoom and these three film speed shutter speed and F number control the brightness this is fine for now okay so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add a Sun to the scene because this is an exterior scene and this is a day scene I'm going to add a Sun so I'm going to go to lights V-Ray V-Ray Sun go to the top viewport and place the Sun somewhere 90 degrees to the camera because I like the angle of the shadows if I do it like that so the Sun begins here and ends here now it will ask me would you like to automatically add V-Ray sky to environment map I will click yes what this does it will create a sky that will engulf the whole image and will be controlled by the Sun so this is what we need I'm going to take the Sun up to the sky in the front viewport here let's take the end of the Sun the point uh, the dot where the sun points and take it to the zero level doesn't really matter but it's easier to see it like that so I'm going to put it in the center of the house the sun shines 90 degrees to the camera so we'll have soft shadows going this way which is good again let's just take it like here let's go back to camera now we have the sun pointing this way alright next thing I want to do is I want to look at the uh, V-Ray sky that was created for the Sun now we have two light sources in the scene as of this moment we have the Sun that will shine 
straight light beams to the house and cast shadows to this direction. And the other one is in rendering environment here. This is the default V-Ray sky that was added automatically with the sun. What this does is creates, let's drag this material here, just drag it to an empty slot, and instance, I'm going to instances, and uh, if you remember from previous tutorials, instance is when you change something in the texture here, it will change automatically here. Copy, if you change something here, it won't change the texture here. So I need to instance it because I want to make changes here that will affect this environment map. Now, in the environment map, we have this V-Ray sky map that shines from all directions on the house. So, in real life, when you're in a day scene, uh, you have light coming from the sky. It doesn't necessarily come only from the sun. The sun hits the atmosphere, and the atmosphere uh, creates this blue sky that you see. So we have lights coming uh, uh, in from 360 degrees, uh, not only from the sun. The sky itself is lighting the scene. So this is what this default V-Ray sky is mimicking. What why I want to do now in this V-Ray sky is add this light as a, a sun node. So if I move the sun down, up, left, right, uh, the sky will change accordingly. Okay, so what I want to do is specific, uh, specify sun node, click here, and specify this node, sunlight, click on none, and choose this sun. Now this sun controls this sky. So wherever I move this sun, the sky will change accordingly. Okay, so now we have two lights. We have the sunlight, we have this V-Ray skylight, which is the, sk the light from the sky, which is in, in the environment slot, which means it's everywhere in the scene. And we have the camera. So that's enough for now. Let's go to camera. If I render now, you can see that the shadow falls and creates this pure black shadows on the house. This is because we don't have GI on. What GI does, global illumination, if you look everywhere uh, where you're sitting now, if you look at a corner of a room, you can see that even in the darkest places, it's not 100% black. You still have light coming in. And that's because light doesn't work like a straight beam. It works, it bounces. When it hits the floor, it bounces off the floor 90 degrees to the wall. It uh, loses a little bit of brightness when it hits the floor, but it still has enough uh, brightness in order to just a little bit illuminate the walls. So this is what the global illumination does. It mimics these bounces. So when the sun will bounce from this deck and hit this wall, it will illuminate these total dark and black uh, shadows. And this will create a realistic uh, looking rendering. In order to create this global illumination, I'm going to start and add a render setup to align the rendering. If you have a previous uh, uh, setup of uh, 3D Studio Max and V-Ray, this may look a little bit different. Maybe the rendering will be down here and not up here, but it's essentially the same. So when you hit render, when I hit render here, uh, if you have the rendering down here, just hit it down here. It's the same, just the location is a little bit different. So first thing I want to do is in the comment tab. I already changed the HDTV to HD resolution, uh, 1920 over uh, 1080. So I'm done with the comment tab for now. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the V-Ray tab. And I'm going to go to frame buffer and make sure that the frame buffer is enabled. Enable built-in frame buffer. So this is uh, uh, great. I'm going to show you why we're using the frame buffer. Because uh, if I render now for a second, you can see that this the, these options here and down here are options from the frame buffer from V-Ray. You don't have these options if you're not using the frame buffer. If you disable this in render again, you can see this is the standard rendering window of 3D Studio Max. 
you lack a lot of options that you have in the VRA frame buffer. So I want to use these options, so I'm going to make sure that the enable frame buffer is on. Next thing I'm going to do is leave this as is, it's fine now. For now, everything is fine except the color mapping. Let's go to the color mapping. Let's change it from basic to expert and change rain hold to linear multiplier. I will always use the linear multiplier uh, type in the color mapping. That's because I will use for the exterior scene a linear workflow. What this means is I'm going to make all the changes to the contrast and colors and things like, th like that in the post-production. After I finish the image in 3D Studio Max, I'm going to take it to Photoshop and make uh, fixes there. This makes the workflow much easier. I don't need to uh, play around with the dark and bright multipliers like I did in the interior tutorial uh, in my channel. You can check it out. Uh, what we need to do is just hit linear multiplier, make sure the gamma is on 2.2. .2. Uh, what the gamma is is a very, very long explanation. I will make a video about it later, but for now, just know that monitors use 2.2 .2 in order to show a, a, an image as you can see it on screen. So the gamma needs to be 2.2. .2. Dark multiplier one, bright multiplier one, everything needs to be like uh, like they it is now. Now I'm going to add the sub pixel mapping and the clamp output. And this is uh, the clamp output and the sub pixel mapping. What they do is if you have too bright of an areas, they will clamp them out. So they will render the image and uh, not too burned out. So this helps with the burning. Okay, make sure that the mode is on color mapping only, no gamma. And the last thing I want you to make sure, this depends on what version of V-Ray and 3D Studio Max you're using. Uh, you need to go to customize, I'm sorry, to rendering, gamma loot setup. And by default, this needs to be on, enable gamma and loot correction. In older version of 3D Studio Max, this was by default off. So you need to make sure this is on. This is on Gamma 2.2. And Material and Color, Effect Color Selection, Effect Material Editor. So this needs to be like this. Hit OK. So now we know that our Gamma is aligned for our scene. And the image won't uh, become too bright or too dark because our Gamma is not aligned. So the color mapping is fine. Linear multiplier 2.2, 1, 1, and what you see here. Uh, I'm going to go more in depth into linear workflow in uh, next tutorials. I will make a series about this. Okay, next thing I want to go is settings. Let's go from basic to expert. I'm going to hit use Embray here. What this does, if you have a newer CPU or newer computers, this can uh, make your rendering go faster. So I uh, recommend you using this option, use Embray. We're done with settings, let's go back to V-Ray. And last thing I forgot to do is go to global switches from basic to expert. And make sure that the prob probabilistic lights are off. This is a new option that came with V-Ray 3. I don't particularly like this option. It uh, just uh, randomly selects which lights to take into consideration. And when this is on, sometimes our rendering will be with uh, a lot of noise. So just make sure this is off. Now I'm going to go to GI. GI is global illumination. This is exactly what I explained before. Uh, our shadows are totally black because there is no GI, no bounces from the light from the sun. If I enable this, now the light from the sun bounces back to the walls and even the uh, black uh, places which are the shadows will be a little bit lit. So enable GI, go from basic to expert and uh, choose irradiance map as the first bouncer and light cache as the second. These are preferred options for exterior scenes or interior scenes. Actually, they're uh, preferred options for 
almost everything. So irradiance map and light cache. In the irradiance map, I'm going to go from basic to expert and change the preset to medium. This preset should be fine for now. We can start with l very low for the beginning to see that the lighting and everything is fine, but I think medium is fine. If the rendering will be too slow, uh, just change it to l very low. Uh, the higher you go, the more rendering time you'll need, but uh, the better and more accurate the result will be. So I'm going to go with medium, even for this test render, because I have a very strong CPU that can handle it. If you have a little less strong computer, you can just put it on very low, and only in the less rendering, after you put everything on, like trees and everything, just go back to medium or high. But usually you don't need more than medium. Medium is fine. And I'm going to go to light cache, make this from basic to expert. And I'm going to leave everything as is for now. Okay, this is fine for test rendering. Now let's try rendering now. You will have the light cache bounce, the first one. Now, now the irradiance map is calculating. As you can see, this area from the shadow is not black anymore because you have a lot of light coming back from grass to the building. So this looks much more natural and not total dark shadows. And you have this grass displacement here. These options that I used in this tutorial are uh, the basic options. I'm going to tweak them a little bit as we go on with the tutorials, but for the beginning they are good options and I recommend using them. Now let's just see what we have here with the image. And in the next tutorial I'm going to add trees and things to the scene and continue tweaking the rendering setup so we'll have a very good result. As you can see, the shadow still falls here, but it's not totally black. That's because you have bouncing of the light from the grass and from the deck. Alright, thank you very much for watching this tutorial, and I'll see you next time in the next tutorial in this series. Thank you and goodbye.